I just got done uh, seeding the field and I got these animals a bag of sweet feed while I was at the uh, while I was at the seed uh, while I was at the seed shop this morning I got them a bag of sweet feed and I just uh, mixed a little bit of corn in there with it and I let them have it I don't know if uh, y'all can hear the uh, the calves uh, balling off uh, over there but uh, I got uh, two new calves yesterday I brought home a third one and so uh Actually, yesterday, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, I was, uh, I don't know if it was two days ago, if it was yesterday, I was saying that I really want to focus on my onboarding program. I think that's something I can work on right now is my onboarding program. I want to get better at uh, onboarding calves. And right now, my uh, my death loss percentages for, uh, for uh, new calves is somewhere around 15 to 20%. And I want to see if I can drop that number. I don't know, uh, you know, as, 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 as good as I can. All right, I want to see if I can drop that number as significantly as I can. And uh, yesterday, actually, it, I was uh, it was kind of I don't I don't know if it was just the aligning of fate. I don't know if the uh, the stars just aligned for me. But yesterday, I was actually bringing home a calf, and uh, I was taking a look at her, and I was like, I, I just I don't know why, but I think something's wrong with this calf. And uh, I took a temperature check on her, and she was already over 104. And so I actually uh, bought a sick calf yesterday. I bought a sick calf yesterday and uh, I gave her the medications. I gave her a shot of antibiotics and I gave her a, a dose of banamine. And this morning she's actually uh, one, she's already better. Uh, she's already significantly better. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know why yesterday I was looking at them and I was actually like, you know, I really want to focus on my onboarding program. I want to really, uh, I want to really do better at onboarding calves. I want to get better at onboarding calves. And I think that one of the metrics that I can utilize and to figure out uh, if I'm getting better at bringing in, uh, taking care of the little, little baby calves is that I can uh, reduce the death loss percentage. And so yesterday I actually bought a sick calf and she wasn't, she wasn't like a huffing and, but I mean, she wasn't like drooling or nothing. Uh, you know, she was, she was breathing a little hard. I was taking a real hard look at her. I was taking a real good look at her. And I was like, you know, she's just breathing a little hard. And so I put my hand on her back and I was like, you know, she's a little bit warm. And so I was like, you know, I took my, I took the temperature on her. Uh, the moment I bought her, I took the temperature on her and uh, she was already over a 104. She was already over 104. And so she was already sick. She wasn't coughing. She wasn't a uh, drooling, nothing. She was just kind of breathing a little hard. I was looking at her and I was like, I think she's just breathing a little hard. And I put my hand on her back and I was like, she's a little bit warm. And so uh, I went and I took her temperature and she was already sick. Uh, I had I had bought a sick calf. And so uh, I gave her a dose of medication and I put a, I put banamine on her. I gave her a dose of banamine. And as of this morning, she's actually doing significantly better. Uh, she looks very alert. She's not breathing heavy. Uh, she's not, uh, you know, she, she, she seems alert and she seems healthy and she's eating a lot of food. She's also eating a lot of food and so she seems healthy. And so I don't know, uh, but yesterday, uh, but you know, that's the thing. It's like when you go to the cell barn, you have to understand that, uh, you know, uh, the world is not Disneyland, okay? Some people will actually sell calves. A lot of people, when they're when they're selling a calf, they're actually selling, uh, there are, there, I'm not gonna say a lot of people, uh, you know, there are a certain segment of people and, and I think that this is a horrible, it's a horrible thing to do. It's like, you know, like, don't be a prick, right? I mean, like, if your animal is sick, you should give, you know, like me, you know, like, uh, look at, look at what I do, right? I mean, I'm not saying like I'm the, uh, the epitome of, of, you know, but me, if, if I even think, if I even think that my animal is sick, if I even think that I, I have a sick animal, I immediately, I immediately start doctoring that animal immediately. All right, I'll take them to the vet. I'll give them the medication myself. I'll do something. I'm not just going to sit there and go, oh my God, I think this animal is sick. You know what I should do? Take the animal to the cell barn, right? I mean, don't be a prick, right? I mean, you know, and like, you know, like, uh, you know, that, that that's one of the things that really, really, really bothers me in the cattle industry is like, if you see somebody who has, who is selling a sick animal, like if you're selling a sick animal, that really bothers me because it's like, you know, if, if you actually, you know, like when you realize that the animal was sick, because I mean, you must have realized that the animal was sick at some point because now you're selling the animal because that animal is sick, right? And I mean, you know, it's like, you know, me, if I even think that one of my animals are sick, I immediately give them medication. All right, I immediately give them medication. I don't, I don't hesitate. I, I give them the best medication that I can give them. You know, I, I you know, I, 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 I immediately start giving them medication, okay? I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I don't go, oh my God, I think my animal's sick. You know, uh, time to take my animal to the cell barn. 
All right, I don't do that. All right, and 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 if and if that is you, or if you know people who do that, I mean, you know, uh, you know, don't be a prick, okay? I mean, if you if you even like me, even if I think an animal is sick, I will give them an antibiotic. Because me, like when I look at my animals, I, you know, uh, I, I talk about this, you know, pr you know, pretty often. But you know, like uh, me, I don't even, uh, like when I see my animals, even if they're small, I should not think that the animal has something wrong with it, even if they're small. If they're small, if they're big, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I should still think that the animal is, is not having problems. If I think that the animal is having problems, I immediately get a hold of that animal and I give the animal medication. And yesterday, I actually ended up buying a sick animal. It, the animal was just breathing a little hard and the animal had a little bit of a fever. That was and that was all she had and so i gave her medication and she is already better she's already doing significantly better i actually think she's probably about 90 percent recovered and so yesterday i brought home uh, three calves i brought home three calves and uh uh you know and i also brought home i also brought home about three thousand cash so i sold i sold four animals i sold four animals uh, i bought three and then i also brought home uh, three grand and so, uh, you know, I still got to buy one more animal and uh, the uh, the three, oh, actually one of the animals that I bought yesterday, uh, you know, I got her for super cheap, but I didn't realize it, but she has a, uh, an abscess on the side of her face. I, you know, she had a, I didn't realize that she had this abscess, but the thing is swollen up and uh, I felt it this morning and it's definitely like, uh, it's definitely got fluid in it. And so I'm not worried about it. Uh, you know, uh, I can, uh, I can take care of the abscess myself or I can take her to the vet and they'll take care of it. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, I, one of the animals has an abscess on the side of her face. It doesn't seem like it's a big deal. Uh, you know, the whole thing about abscesses, from my understanding, is that when an animal has an abscess, you don't want the thing to be hard. And so if you press on it, it should be kind of soft. Because if it's kind of soft, that means that there's fluid in it. And if there's fluid in it, it's probably just an abscess. And you can drain the abscess, give the animal an antibiotic, clean it out, and then it'll just go away. But if the thing is hard, if it's like a growth, then it could be a tumor or it could be like a bone growth, which is even worse. You don't want a, you know, you, you don't want a, like a bacterial infection in the bone of the animal that is causing the bone to swell because that could also be contagious. And so, uh, you know, but uh, that's the thing that like me, when I get an animal with an abscess, I'll feel the abscess. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll push the abscess and if the abscess is soft, then it's usually just a just a regular old abscess. You pop the abscess, you lance the abscess and it'll drain and then you give the animal an antibiotic and you're pretty much good to go. And so uh, actually today, uh, the thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, I just wanted to do a quick recap of the things that I've been talking about and just, you know, uh, you know, because uh, I've always said that me at the end of the day, you know, like uh, whatever, right? I mean, you know, uh, you know, I make a I make a lot of money and, and, you know, effectively, I make enough to do anything that I want. And it's like if you want to think about the money in terms of cattle, then you can think about it in terms of cattle. You know, if you if you can't understand, like yesterday, okay, I mean, yesterday, it's like I brought home three calves and I also brought home three grand, okay? I mean, I mean, that's very simple. I brought home three calves and I brought home three, uh, I brought home three grand, uh, you know, uh, and one of the one of the animals has an abscess on her and if she didn't have the abscess, I would have probably paid an extra $300 for her. And so subtract 300, that puts me at 2,700. I would have probably had to buy another animal. You know, that's four animals. And so, and but also yesterday, I actually brought home calves that were 230 pounds and so i went a little bit over my benchmark animal uh weight and so you got to consider that i mean i ended up paying for uh, 60 more pounds than i anticipated well but i mean e tomato tomato it's all about the same okay uh you know um, if i sell five calves at a time and i sell them uh, two times a month then i make about uh you know yesterday i only sold four and so yesterday i came home with like whatever uh, in reality you know in terms of a net profit if i include everything maybe i came home with about eighteen hundred dollars but i only sold four calves if i sold five calves i would have probably made another whatever seven hundred dollars right i mean i would have made another seven hundred dollars that's twenty five hundred dollars if i go to the sell barn an average of two point whatever i was saying two point one six times a month then if you if you just take the numbers and it's like effectively i'm making about a whatever five thousand three hundred dollars a month right and i was saying you know i'm not doing very good right now i'm not making a boatload of money but i'm still making about five grand you know if i lowball myself maybe i'm making four all right and that's exactly what i said word for word and I was like, you know, if you're having difficulty understanding the numbers, then look at it in terms of cattle, okay? I sold four yesterday. I brought home three. One of them had an abscess on it, and I also uh, brought home an extra $3,000 cash. 
all right so if you want to take a look at it like that uh, and so i mean either way whichever way you cut it i mean it's still a whole pie it's still the exact same thing all right i you know if i sell five animals two times a month and i go to the cell barn every two weeks and there's 52 weeks in a year that means i go to the cell barn 26 times a year and there's 12 months in a year so i go to the cell barn like 2.25 times a year right whichever way whatever way works for you you know wh whatever you understand do it that way all right if you understand the money in terms of cattle then look at it in terms of cattle if you understand the money in terms of just the numerical value of the things that i'm doing then just uh, you know take a look at it for the numerical value of things that i'm doing whatever whatever makes sense to you do it that way okay it doesn't matter to me i mean you know uh, there are many different ways to look at it, but whichever way you cut the pie it's almost the it's all not almost it is the exact same pie it does not matter how you cut it right i mean it's the exact same thing and i was saying i'm not even doing very good right now and i would anticipate that i'm netting a profit of about five thousand dollars a month right i'm not even doing that fantastic i mean realistically i need to be picking up the pace but uh you know i got a i got a lot of different things going on and uh i'm working on picking up the pace and i'm also uh i'm also looking to improve my uh my onboarding process and i'm looking to utilize the death loss percentage as an onboarding uh, as a metric for what am i going to use to determine if i'm getting better at onboarding calves and i have a couple of experimental procedures i have a couple of things that i'm going to try i'm going to experiment that i believe that are objectively going to put me in the right direction like uh you know yesterday uh you know i'm you know i'm gonna be more uh, i'm gonna analyze the animals more carefully when i first bring them in yesterday i ended up buying a sick calf but I was very fortunate that she was just starting to get sick. She wasn't even coughing yet. She just looked like something was wrong with her. I put my hand on her back and she was a little warm. I took her temperature. She was running a fever. I gave her an antibiotic and I also gave her a dose of banamine. And she seems like she's already doing better today. I would say that she's about 90% better today. And so, you know, uh, if, you know, uh, if like if I wasn't careful, if I didn't give her the band, I mean, I didn't put her in the uh, in the uh, in the emergency, uh, you know, I, I call it the emergency room. But I have a barn space that I have over there that I'll uh, I, like if I have an animal that I believe is sick, I'll put the animal over there by themselves. And I'll also I got a fan in there. It's, it's uh, you know, I got a I got a fan in there. So it feels real good. You know, uh, it's uh, it's covered from the sun 24-7 uh, almost. I mean, there's about an hour a day where the sun will actually hit the uh, the barn just right and get some sunlight in there. But that's good for the animal. I mean, it doesn't really matter. And then I'll give her access to food and water, all the food and water that they can eat. And also, I'm going to, you know, uh, okay, here's one thing that I, you know, I, I've been kind of hypothesizing, right? I've been kind of looking at what I'm doing and I'm like, you know, uh, well, actually, I wanted to go over, you know, before I went over the things that I'm working on, I wanted to go over the things that I've been talking about. Okay, and in terms of, uh, you know, I've always, you know, uh, what I, you know, the things that I've been saying are, you know, uh, in terms of if you're looking to make money, I would highly suggest that you start thinking about other things than cash, right? I was, I was talking about this, but, you know, it, cash is not the only way to make money. In reality, cash is probably the hardest, most unrealistic way to make money. All right, I mean, cash is, is not a very realistic way to make money, okay? In reality, if you wanna make a large amount of money, you should be looking for an equitable asset. And that equitable asset in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, in a more ideal sense, that equitable asset should be tax deductible, give you tax deductions, and it should also be appreciating profitably. You know, uh, in, 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 in all reality, you know, you really want something that you can make appreciate on your own terms. If you are given an asset, you actually knowledgeably can increase the value of that asset. That is the asset, that is the most optimal asset. And I'm and everybody should not go and become a cattleman, okay? And I've I was talking about this yesterday, but a lot of times, you know, the, the one thing that, you know, I, I put a, a big emphasis on this, but this right here, like what you're looking at, it might be the most successful cattle farm on the entire planet. All right, this might legitimately be the most successful cattle farm on the entire planet. You're probably not ever going to get to this point in your entire life. I myself have not seen anybody even manage to get to the 10% mark. All right, not even 10%. Most people can't even make $70,000, $80,000 a year on 1,000 acres. All right, I make, you know, on the average, I would say that my, my average income, when I start growing grass, you're going to see what I mean. Okay, this grass, I actually put $1,100 into planting all of my grass. It cost me $1,100. And you're going to see what happens. All right, I will legitimately end up growing so much grass that, it, it, I mean, it's... 
you know, it's, it's going to cost me, on the average, it costs me about $550 a month to grow grass over the long average, all right? And fertilizer prices are about the same. Uh, you know, $550, $500 to $750 a month is what it costs me on the average. I actually planted the seed and put one uh, put 90 pounds of phosphorus and potassium per acre on, on, on my field. And I did all of that for $1,100. And you're going to see what I'm talking about. All right, like, you know, growing grass is almost free. And when you and me, the, my biggest advantage is that I am very good at growing grass. That is one of my biggest advantages. I may be one of the best crop men on. I may be one of the best crop growers on the entire planet. In terms of running cattle, you will probably find, you know, you know, you could probably at least find 10,000 people on the planet that are better than me at running cattle. OK, but in terms of growing grass, I may be in terms of growing crop. I may be one of the best on the entire planet. All right, I'm not even making this up. See if you can go and find somebody that can do it like me. And if you want to use money as a metric, then use money as a metric. I make almost like I was on a conservative estimate. I'm not even doing good right now when I'm still making like $60,000 a year, okay? I'm not even doing well, all right? I'm actually underperforming. Uh, you know, I've been taking the money that I've been making to get my, my new property squared away, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and, and I am still like uh, producing $60,000 a year of net income, cash. All right, and so, you know, you know, you know, whichever way you want to look at it, see if you can find somebody that's even making $60,000 a year on 10 acres. All right, if you can find one other person, see if you can find anybody even making $10,000 a year on 10 acres. I mean, see if you can even find somebody making $60,000 a year net profit on 500 acres on a thousand acres okay go and go and knock yourself out go go and have fun i mean see if you can find somebody okay and if you want to use the money as a metric you can use the money as a metric all right and so you know uh, you know in terms of you know in terms of making money in terms of making money you know cash is the most unrealistic way to generate large amounts of money in reality i would highly suggest in terms of how did i make all of my money right how did i generate such a massive amount of money all right how did i do it me in terms of me the way that i did it i talk about these things in terms of a fundamental idea because the way that i did it is it, it's 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 almost unheard of all right in, in the world of business this is also something you probably don't understand but in the world of business starting a successful business is considered the hardest thing that you could ever do in business Starting a successful business is the hardest thing that you could ever do in business. It is the it is the thing that nobody will ever, ever, like practically ever choose to do. If you actually want to run a business, then go and buy a business, okay? Go and buy one. You can buy one. I've already talked about how do you develop, you know, what is the equitable value of a business, right? What is the equitable value of a business? It is a multiple of the earnings, all right? And so if, you know, well, you know, just go and buy one, okay? But in the world of business, you know, the people who are in business, people understand this. The hardest thing that you could ever do in business is start a successful business, all right? It is the hardest thing you could do. And the thing about me is that I could legitimately go anywhere and I will still, and I will practice Practically, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying like, uh, like you know, uh, I'm not going to go to Antarctica, right? I'm not going to go to the North Pole, right? I'm not going to go to, you know, whatever, right? I mean, you know me, like, why would I leave Central Texas, right? I mean, Central Texas is where I was born and raised. I mean, this is the market that I understand. I make a boatload of money in this market. Why would I leave? Right. I mean, maybe I would go, you know, maybe, you know, I, you know, I was thinking about maybe I would buy land in Oklahoma, like Oklahoma. Sure, I could I would think about it. All right, maybe maybe the uh, the western uh, part of Louisiana, maybe I would buy land over there. You know, but I wouldn't go real. I, I mean, uh, you know, I wouldn't go into the middle of nowhere, right? I mean, why would I? You know, and I was talking about this yesterday, but you know, uh, I have a massive advantage, right? Like, you know, I you know always play to your advantage. Why would you play to lose, right? I mean, it's like you know, why would I move to Alaska? Why would I move to the North Pole? Why would I go somewhere that just doesn't have any cattle? Why would I go? All right, I mean, you know, when I run cattle and I grow grass, I effectively make so much money that I can do anything that I want. 
all right and, and it's like if you want to know what a uh, you know and i was saying you know if it takes me a long time it'll take me nine months but on a on a seven to nine month schedule i i make about a 70 percent compounding growth on my money all right compounding and if you don't understand what that means in terms of a number if i bring home if i have 100 cattle Within nine months, I will actually have made enough money with those 100 cattle to purchase 170 cattle. That's what 70% compounding growth looks like every nine months. If you don't understand what money is, if you don't understand the idea of numbers, then you can look at it in terms of cattle. If I, was, if, if I have 100 cattle, and I'm just left to do whatever it is that I need to do, right? Uh, you know, I'm gonna you know, profitably, knowledgeably increase the value of this asset. Right, and then I'm going to take that money and I'm going to reinvest it to purchase myself new assets. You know, if you know, if you want to think about it, you know, in terms of me, and I'm not saying that, you know, well, you know, and I, and I, I, was, I even said it earlier in this video, you have to understand that when it comes to doing something like this, I am legitimately potentially the best on the entire planet. All right, legitimately, I may be the best on the entire planet. I mean, I haven't seen anybody even get to the 10% mark. The chances of anybody getting to this point are almost 0%. All right, and it's like, and maybe if I, if I make that very, very, very clear, you will put in the effort that is required to make it. All right, I'm, I'm telling you, this is going to be the hardest thing that you have ever done in your entire life. I don't know anybody personally that's even gotten to the 10% mark, all right? This is going to be borderline impossible for almost everybody. And this is all, and yesterday I was talking about this, but it's, it's, it's not a good use of resources, right? I mean, to take somebody who's, a, you, know, you know, a massive pile of problems, the damage has already been done. You know, life is a la-la land adventure. And, you know, I just randomly decided one day that I could become the best farmer on the entire planet and then turn them in. It's not going to happen. All right, and, I, and I've already said that the biggest idea, the biggest thing, I think that the biggest, one of the biggest things that make a, make a difference for me is that I work seven days a week. All right, and this is what I call practicing all the time. And you're gonna see what happens. Me, I put $1,100 into fertilizing in my entire field. I put 90 pounds of phosphorus and 90 pounds of potassium and 20 pounds of nitrogen on my entire field per acre and i also seeded it i also planted winter wheat seed and it costed me one thousand one hundred dollars to do everything and you're going to see what happens when it starts raining okay uh, granted that it you know well i mean whatever you know eventually you know even you know whatever right there is no such thing as a guarantee you know there is only due diligence you know, uh, me, I did, I, you know, I worked diligently, right? I was checking the weather and, uh, you know, uh, and I was uh, watching the, the rain percentages and I was, uh, you know, looking at the temperature and I was looking at the ground moisture and, you know, I did, I did my due diligence and, uh, but there is no such thing as a guarantee, okay? I mean, but it's supposed to start raining starting tomorrow and it's supposed to rain about four days out of the next eight days. So over the next eight days, we're supposed to get about four days of rain. That's what the weather channel is saying. We'll have to take a look. And so I got everything done today. It costed me $1,100 and I planted my entire field of hay, okay? I legitimately grew, I, I legitimately uh, planted enough. I, I didn't grow it, not yet. It still needs to grow, but I planted enough hay. I planted enough grass to feed probably close to 40 or 50 cattle. All right, and it costed me one thousand one hundred dollars. All right, and so you and so you're gonna see what I mean by when it comes to growing grass, it's almost free. You know, I planted enough grass to probably I'll, I'll be able to feed forty or fifty cattle. Granted that there's you know they're under eight hundred pounds. If they're if they're somewhere between you know uh, you know somewhere on the average weight of about four or five hundred pounds, I'll be able to feed forty to fifty of them for the amount of grass that I planted. And it costed me $1,100. And over the long term, as, as time goes on, I'm not going to be putting more phosphorus and potassium. I put almost 90 pounds. I put 90 pounds of phosphorus and potassium into the field and then I, and then I plowed it into the soil. 90 pounds, all right? And so, you know, I'm not gonna be putting 90 pounds of nitrogen on my field next month. How much How much nitrogen, I know I talked about this, you know, how much nitrogen do you anticipate? I've already talked about this in terms of the data that I found in the, in the, in terms of like a, when I grow my grass, this is, you know, this is a relatively 
optimal sort of a growth pattern for the you know you know biomass accumulation for the grass how much nitrogen does that require granted that the weather conditions are somewhat optimal somewhere between you know 70 and 85 degrees in the afternoon and about 40 to 50 degrees in the evening and i get three or four inches of rain a month what is the amount of nitrogen that the plants will essentially metabolize you know it's, it's about 25 to 30 pounds a month okay you know and, and the answer has not changed the, the answer is the exact same so you know it's like 25 pounds of nitrogen and i was talking about what kind of fertilizer am i going to use i'm going to more than likely i'm going to be using a urea ammonium sulfate mixture i was talking about this yesterday but the big plan right now is is the reason that i'm doing what i'm doing is so that when i go back over my field i you know i have an ample amount of phosphorus and potassium so i don't have to worry about applying that and what i'll more than likely end up doing is mixing urea and ammonium sulfate and applying that on my field at a rate of about 25 to 30 pounds of nitrogen per acre and then you know that's that's the essentially the plan moving forward and it's like if i think about that oh well if you know if uh if uh if uh, whatever if uh you know, if uh the fertilizer if a urea ammonium sulfate mixture is a 330012 npk sulfur and that costs five hundred and fifty dollars an acre and i want to put on uh you know i want to put on 30 pounds uh 30 pounds per acre across 10 acres and what's it going to then how many you know uh, how many uh, tons of fertilizer do i need i need half a ton what does half a ton you know i need one thousand pounds if i have one thousand pounds and that fertilizer is 330012 npk sulfur then i'm going to get roughly 30 pounds 25 pounds of nitrogen per acre on the field and you know if i put 100 pounds in so it's going to cost me about 275 dollars all right I, and i and i'm actually and i'll actually say this right now if i have if i have access to uh to ammonium sulfate or and uh you know i have access to urea right now but if i have access to ammonium sulfate and i mix urea and ammonium sulfate my salt my, my my fertilizer bill next next month is going to be about 275 dollars okay and if you if you and when i look at the long you know because you know and i always say me you know the thing about me is that i am sincerely giving you the best information that i can a lot of you don't understand this you know and, and most people are in a situation where even if you were looking at it you would have no idea what was going on and even worse you would actually start running the wrong way all right most people are staying and, and you know and i always tell myself don't even you know don't even you know whatever right uh, make an attempt to save you know save people but you know but here i am okay i'm, I'm attempting to save people all right you don't want to go running off in the wrong way okay you know and me i'm not the only person that does things like this i'm not the only person everybody who is very successful in the cattle business effectively does this everybody and if you and, and a lot of you you don't even know but me like me if i saw somebody who was farming and let's say whatever oh my god they look cool right i mean they're on a horse they're running around with their nice hat and they got on their nice boots and they look like they're you know running uh you know 200 cattle around on a on a 5,000 acre field you know to you that might look cool but to me that looks like a, a borderline homeless person Okay, like you probably don't understand. I mean, you, you, you probably have no idea the, the financials around being a farmer. You, you probably don't have any idea. Most people don't. What does it actually look like to be a, a massively successful farmer? You have no idea. All right, you probably don't know. All right, you know, and it might look cool. Oh my God, this guy's got all, this guy's got a cool head, and this guy's got some nice boots, and you know, he's got like 200 cattle, and he's running around with them all over the place, and it looks cool on camera. And it's like, oh, my, but me, when I see that, that I mean, the guy might as well just be a rodeo show, right? I mean, the guy might as well just be a circus show. All right, I mean, he's he's borderline a homeless person. I guarantee it. He's not going to make much money, if any, at all. All right, and so you know, and so you know, but you got to understand, me, you know, it's like a on this 10 and a half acre field running commercial cattle i borderline make about on a conservative if i don't do very good i make about sixty thousand dollars a year you know if, if i reinvested my earnings and i just compounded my growth you know i didn't take my money and purchase and put it into my new property i would be sitting in this situation where i would have over 100 cattle on this field right now all right that that's another way to look at it i mean you know if you if you don't understand the money then you can look at it in terms of cattle you know yesterday i sold four cattle i brought home three one of them kind of had a problem and i i uh, you know i it's not a big problem thank goodness because i didn't really realize that the animal had an abscess so it's not a big problem but i would i would evaluate the problem at about 300 dollars. and it's like if i have to purchase another calf as well then i still came home with about 1800 dollars, and i only sold four calves 
If I had sold a fifth one, I would have probably made another $700 net profit. That's $2,500. If I go to the sale barn two point whatever, two, five times a year or a month, if I go to the sale barn on the average 2.16 times a month or whatever it is, then you can, you're, then, then you understand that that's over five, just, just over $5,000 a month. Right. And so, you know, uh, whatever. Right. And it's like, you know, and if, and if, and if, and if I end up with a, uh, you know, uh, you know, a severe case of BRD or whatever, then, then realistically, maybe I make about four thousand dollars a month. Okay, maybe I make about four thousand. And so, you know, uh, even right now, uh, you know, uh, if I'm not doing well, I'm still making a net profit of four thousand dollars a month. Uh, you know, and realistically, it's going to be closer to about five. And you know, uh, you know, most people cannot make money like this on even. You know, most people can't even make money like this on a thousand acres. All right. I mean, most people. I mean, most people can't even. And you know, here's the thing. And I actually wanted to talk about this: the idea of getting to the ten percent mark. And you know, and you know, I've already, I've already said this probably three times on this video. But when you're watching me farm, you don't understand that you may legitimately be watching the most successful farm on the entire planet. One of the most successful farms on the entire planet. If everybody could do this, they would already be doing it. All right. There. I mean, I mean, it just, it, it makes such a massive amount of money. All right. At the end of the day, let's just, let's just call a spade a spade. You know, if, if people actually understood that they could make, you know, this significant amount of money, they would. Everybody would go and do it. But the reason people don't do it is because they can't and why can they not do it because it's almost impossible i can almost guarantee that if every single you know almost nobody i haven't i haven't even seen one person get to the 10 percent mark all right and we're just gonna have to call a spade a spade and maybe if i say it then then you know somebody will actually put in the effort that is required to learn how to become a legitimate farmer all right, becoming a farmer, you know, learning how to farm at this level, I, I, I almost relate, I relate it to something like playing sports. All right, it's like, imagine that you want to become the best basketball player on the entire planet. Imagine that you want to become the best soccer player on the entire planet. It's almost a 0% probability. Almost a 0 all right, then it is almost 0% that you're going to make it. And at the end of the day, you probably do not have it in you to do it. You probably don't. All right, I, you know, and I'm not I'm not talking about this like, oh, my God, you know, uh, look at me, you know, you know, because me, I, you know, I give it all to God. You know, I've already talked about this. I did not know, you know, I did not even get paid until my 13th year. I didn't even get paid until my 13th year. And when I got when, when I started making such a drastic amount of money, I didn't even I didn't even I didn't even plan for things to go go this well i had no idea all right i had no idea that things were going to go so well for me all right i i had no idea all right i did not plan for things to go this well for me i did not plan for it i you know i had no idea okay i, ha I had no idea and things went way better than i ever 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 planned i mean way better than i ever anticipated i mean i do so well for myself in the cattle business it's, it's almost it's, it's like i don't even know how to describe it i mean you know i did not plan for things to go this well for me all right at the end of the day i didn't and so you know uh, but the, you know the probability of anybody making it to this point is almost a zero percent almost zero percent i haven't seen anybody even get to the 10 percent mark and here's the thing this is and think about the, what the 10 percent mark looks like all right and you know i was talking about this in terms of a recap you know in terms of making money what's what's in terms of reality you know in terms of like a, you know if we're going to talk about the broader broader sense of things it's like you know you're probably not going to make it as a farmer all right we got to consider that i mean and if you can make it then go and make it prove me wrong all right i mean i don't know anybody that's even managed to get to the 10 percent mark all right you know and, and you know you know and in terms of like let's talk about reality okay because you're probably not going to make it as a farmer all right you're probably not all right and if we talk about if we talk about reality think about like this even if you got to the 10 percent mark if you just took the ideas and you found something else that you could do even if you got to the 10 percent mark imagine what the 10 percent mark would look like Right. Instead of generating five million dollars a year, instead of generating ten million dollars a year, you generate five hundred thousand. You generate one million. Let's just say five hundred thousand. Let's just say five hundred thousand a year. You generate five hundred thousand dollars a year and you make a 14 percent return on that five hundred thousand. All right. Then you would be making yourself an extra like seventy thousand dollars a year right off the bat. Year number one. Year number two, you would be making an extra 148. Let's say you, uh, whatever, you went and got another deal and you did it and you did it again. You would be making an extra $140,000 a year. 
by year number two. You don't need to. You don't need to become the greatest farmer that the world has ever seen. All right, you don't need to. It's it's not it's not it's not even close to being a requirement in terms of making a large amount of money. All right, and you're you're gonna see what I mean. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, here uh, within six months, I would, within six months, I would. You know, I'm just going to say this now. I am going to, you know, for the first time in my life, I will go over $50,000 in one month. I will make more than $50,000 in one month cash, not equity, no nothing, just straight cash. I will make over $50,000 in one month in less than six months. I will, have, you know, uh, uh, let me take a look at my animals. Uh, seven to nine months within within in less than nine months, I will make $50,000 cash in less than one month all right and you can you can uh you can hold me to it it's october whatever right october whatever uh, october 29th i mean by uh by september or whatever it is of august of next year i will make over fifty thousand dollars in one month cash no equity no nothing all right and then it's like you know you know um, you know you can you can uh, hold me to it all right i will actually state it right now i will do it and chances are, but I'm, I'm telling you, you know, in terms of farming, you're probably not going to make it. But imagine this. Imagine that you got to the, you even got to the 10% mark. If you just got to the 10% mark and me, I've, I've already talked about this, but me, the reason why my net worth is so high, why, why am I worth such a large amount of money? It is because of my very, very, very kind of niche skill set. Right, like if you put me anywhere by myself, I can legitimately just make millions of dollars by myself. You know, am I gonna make a multiple billion dollar company by myself? No, I'm not, right? I mean, and I've thought about this, but it's like, you know, it's like if, if you know, like let's say that I actually go from, you know, thinking about becoming a 100, you know, thinking about making a, you know, whatever, $500 million in my life to thinking about making a billion dollars in my life. If I wanna become a billionaire, I will probably not be, you know, I can almost get, I will not be able to do it by myself. I won't be able to and so i was like you know uh, well you know uh, you know but you know i probably won't i mean am i gonna you know ask for help from a bunch of you know useless i mean you know practically homeless you know no i'm not right i mean you know i, I would look to you know uh, you know whatever right i don't know but i don't know what it's gonna look like but you know uh, but in reality me you know the and i don't i don't even know you know uh, like you know i don't you know but th that that's kind of like a, one of the things that i i have to deal with right is that me it's like me uh you know i could probably make about 50 million dollars by myself throughout my life if i really set myself to it i could probably make myself somewhere between 50 to 100 million dollars but this is also the you know and but you know but that, that's kind of like my niche thing right it's like you know this is a guy who legitimately it's like how many people can say that how many people can say it's like if you legitimately just left me to my own devices i wouldn't just implode right i wouldn't just start mad doing massive amounts of drugs i wouldn't just go and get myself 10 girlfriends i wouldn't just go and start acting like an idiot i you know i probably would just go and make myself 50 million dollars i probably would just go and make myself 100 million dollars how many people do you know that can do that i mean probably not many it might you know me i'm one of the very few Right, but it's like if I actually want to get myself to a point where it's like I want to go past $100 million in my life, if I want to go past $500 million in my life, then I'm probably going to have to look, you know, and, and start a, you know, a, a thing, you know, but I, I told myself the big thing about me is that in terms of me, I'm going to work as hard as I can, as long as I can by myself until I can't do it anymore. That's that's the big idea. And it's like when I get to a certain point, maybe it's like when I make fifty thousand dollars a month, I can hire somebody and just pay them like three or four thousand dollars a month to just help me do things. Right. I mean, maybe I can just pay them whatever, you know, four thousand dollars a month and they'll just help me. Right. Maybe I can, you know, and, and if I was going to do that, who, you know, I would I would look for the best, most capable individual that I could find, because, I mean, this is a seven day a week job. I mean, you're going to have to work seven days a week. I mean, there's a lot of things that need to get done. Right. And so, you know, uh, you, know um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, when I get to the fifty thousand dollar a month mark, maybe I hire somebody then. But, you know, in terms of me, you know, I'm going to do as much as I can by myself for as long as I can. And, you know, and that's kind of like my niche thing. It's kind of like, you know, what makes what makes Howard kind of interesting is that, you know, it's like if you legitimately put him somewhere by himself entirely alone, he could probably legitimately make a hundred million dollars by himself. I mean, he legitimately would not ask anybody for help. I mean, he would I mean, he would legitimately just do it himself.
And not, not, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, but more or less do it himself. He's not going to go, oh, my God, you know, I need to go and find a buddy, buddy, pal, pal. Oh, my God, you know, now that I made some money, I'm going to go and uh, just become an idiot. You know, I'm just going to start doing a massive amount of drugs, buy myself a nice car, get myself 10 girlfriends, you know, uh, YOLO. You know, he's not going to do that, right? I mean, it's kind of, it's that's kind of like my niche thing, I guess. It's like the thing that is like kind of interesting, right? It's like here's a guy who would legitimately, if you just, you know, if you just left him to his own devices, he probably would just go and make a hundred million dollars by himself all right i mean he probably would more or less by himself i mean you know and you know but you know but uh, you know but that's why my net worth is so high that's what that's you know in terms of like why am i worth so much money that's the thing that makes me worth so much money but at the end of the day it's like if i'm gonna get past a hundred million dollars or i'm gonna get past 500 million dollars or especially if i'm looking to get past a billion dollars in my life then i will actually probably have to start you know uh you know uh delegating things right and i was like you know in terms of i don't really even want to delegate things because at the end of the day you know one of the things about me is that i really do not like telling people what to do i don't like doing it some people get a kick out of doing it it's like oh my god you know i'm the boss and i'm gonna be and i'm gonna tell you what to do but me i don't like doing that i, I you know if i have to tell somebody what to do and i have to tell them what to do every single minute of every single day it will just be like me you know just punching myself in the face all the time i don't want to have to you know i, I you know I, you know, me, you know, I really like to see people who are just, you know, they're just going to go out and do things on their own and they're going to be productive and useful. And then at the end of the day, it's like, you know, uh, you know, whatever, right? I mean, you know, money, you know, it's like if I, if I, if I actually found somebody who was incredibly useful, right? I mean, they were incredibly useful to me, then it's like, yeah, I mean, I would happily pay whatever, right? I mean, you know, go and enjoy your life too. I mean, you know, whatever, right? I mean, you can, you know, you never have to worry about money again. You know, but you know, it's like, you know, but in reality, what does that look like? I mean, we're, what we're talking about is maybe, you know, 0 0.00001 percentile of the entire human population. I mean, farming is not something that you can just learn one day. I mean, farming, you know, it's, it's, it's seven, you work seven days a week. I mean, you know, it's not something, you know, it's not something that you can just buy or it's not something that, you know, it's not something you're born to do. I mean, you have to learn how to do it or, or it's just not going to happen. And so, you know, and, and I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, um, you know, one day I will have to hire somebody. I probably will. Am I going to hire an idiot? No, I'm not. Right. I mean, you know, but well, one day I probably will have to hire somebody. But my big plan for myself is I'm going to do everything by myself for as long as I can. I'm going to do as much as I can by myself for as long as I can. And then I'm going to figure it out. And so that's the big plan. And so, uh, you know, but I want to talk about this, but you know, uh, you know, in terms of a recap and in terms of the overall idea, you should not be, uh, I would highly suggest that you stop thinking about cash when it comes to making money. You should look for something that is equitable, that makes a positive return and is also knowledgeably appreciatable by you. You're able to knowledgeably appreciate the value of the asset and the asset makes a positive return. And, uh, you know, uh, and if you think about this in terms of an idea, in terms of an overall broader idea, you know, in terms of a reality sense, you're probably not going to become a cattleman, all right? If you want to learn how to become a cattleman, I mean, it's going to be the hardest thing that you have ever done in your entire life. I don't know anybody that's even managed to get to the 10% mark of what I do. You know, uh, you know, man, but if you really think about it, if you just did 10% of what I was doing, and you just managed to make yourself, uh, you know, a half, if, you, if you just managed to generate yourself a half a million dollars worth of equity a year, if you just managed to generate half a million dollars worth of equity a year and you made a 14% return on that half a million, you would still be making like a net positive 70 grand a year. And if you did that for two years, you would have a $1 million net, uh, you would have a $1 million equity portfolio and it would be making you $140,000 a year. And after a certain point, the money does not do anything, okay? It doesn't. And so, you know, uh, you know, if you think about it in terms of a reality sense, you know, think about it like that. You know, after a certain point, the money does not make a difference. All right. And if you even got to the 10 percent mark, I mean, you would be doing so well for yourself that you would understand what it means that, you know, it's like the money no longer makes a difference. And if you want to see what it looks like to have a multi-million dollar net worth, uh, you know, uh, you know, my net worth right now is probably borderline, uh, you know, borderline two million and it's probably going to go over five million. You know, maybe even borderline 10 million in the next 365 days. And if you want to take a look at what money looks like for me, I compound, I compound my, I compound my assets 70, I compound my assets 70 percent every nine months. If I'm slow, it'll take me nine months to compound growth, to, to increase the value of my assets by 70 percent. That's what it looks like when you have a net worth like mine. 
All right, and if you and if you if you don't understand what that looks like, then think about it in terms of cattle. If I have 100 cattle right now, in nine months I will have 170 cattle. All right, and in nine months after that I will have like. I don't even know, like 350 cattle. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, 290 cattle, whatever it is. All right, it, you know, if, if you want to know what it looks like, you know, and why do I say things like the money is now irrelevant? You know, if I run cattle, I can make so much money that I can do anything that I want effectively. You know, why do I say these things? And you know, uh, you know, I just planted enough grass to feed like 40 animals, and it costed me like $1,000. Right, uh, on the average, it's going to cost me about uh, $500 a month to feed 40 animals on grass, granted that I have decent weather conditions. Right, and so, you know, you're going to see what I mean, all right? Uh, you know, you're going to see what I mean. You know, when you have a net worth like mine, you know, what does money look like? You're compounding your, 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 your assets 70% every nine months. That's what it looks like. All right, and if you're having difficulties understanding the money, then, then look at it in terms of cattle. All right, and whichever way you cut the pie, it's still a whole pie, it doesn't matter. All right, you know, me, when I run cattle, I make so much money that I can do effectively anything that I want. All right, and, you know, anything. Short of, like, drugs, alcohol, gambling, being an idiot. All right, now, I've always said if you're an idiot, you are not going to make enough money to save yourself from being an idiot. You're not. All right, I guarantee it. You will always, you know, you know, and and it's probably you probably need to find some kind of a spiritual grounding. You probably need God. All right, because I mean, there was no benefit to you being an idiot. You might be a net negative on the entire earth. You're dragging other people into being poor with you. There was no good reason for you to be poor. The list goes on and on. It doesn't make you a good person to be poor. If you're an idiot, then it's not like, you know, and you, uh, you know, you, you put 50 idiots in a room. It's not like, oh my God, you know, we got a Power Ranger Megazord. You just have 50 idiots in a room. All right, it's not, it's not a good thing. All right, it's not good to be an idiot. You should not be acting like an idiot. All right, and at the end of the day, even if you managed to only do 10%, you would still make such a large amount of money that you could do anything that you wanted anything all right and you're gonna have to you're probably gonna have to learn how to do it i was not born with this information i had to learn how to do it too and i can almost guarantee that everybody that is actually a somebody had to learn how to do it all right nobody was born with the answer you're, you're gonna have to learn how to do it all right but and i know that this is gonna sound horrible but you know if you know if you're poor it's already probably too late it probably is. You will you will hold on to being poor forever. I can almost guarantee it. There is no good reason for you to hold on to it, but you will hold on to being poor forever. It's like being on drugs. You're just not going to give up the drugs under any circumstance. I can almost guarantee it. All right. So, you know, but, you know, that, I guess that's the last thing I'll say for today. Y'all have a good one, you too.